That snake bliskin has been so funny. Uh, maybe we'll go through all of them, but right now, number five is all that matters. We'll have to play number one. Ethan it's good. Grassy facility. That's where we are. Help me, Snake. It's a setup. We have no choice. Yeah. If Chico talks, he could blow the new cover up. We can't hold off until the inspection's over. When can we be ready? It'll take at least 16 hours to confirm the flight path and prep a bird. The intel unit has started reconning the area. Sounds like I'll have to miss the inspection. Boss, we'll just have to send someone else to get them out. No. I'll go. Yeah. Chico and Paz would only take orders from you anyway. And we can't go taking on those Marines at the base head on. It's got to be off the radar, and it's got to be you. Hold down the fort, cost. The best. Big boss, the best. Here we go. Snake, you can forget about civil liberties where you're headed. God only knows what they'd do to you if you got caught. Do not let that happen. The Cubans leased the land to the U.S. as a gesture for helping them gain independence from Spain. The deal remains in effect until both countries agree to dissolve it or the U.S. abandons the land. That's why America still operates the base even after La Revolución. Problem is, it's leased land. Meaning it isn't American soil, so the U.S. Constitution doesn't apply there. That allows them to withhold its civil rights protections. Yeah, that's Uncle Sam's excuse. The area was originally only for detaining refugees from countries like Cuba and Haiti. But a few years ago, the CIA and its likes started using it as a black site. Enemies of the state are renditioned there and subjected to extreme forms of interrogation. You can bet Cypher had a hand in that. As you'd expect, American and other Western human rights organizations aren't allowed anywhere near the place. What happens there disappears down the memory hole. Who knows what they're doing to Chico and Paz? I'd like to interrogate her ourselves. But if worse comes to worst, make sure she's dead. Chico, on the other hand, we have to bring back. Fast. He knows too much about us. Cos. The area is surrounded by mines placed by both the U.S. and Cuba, making escape on foot impossible. You're heading into the lion's den, Snake. Don't take this one lightly. Come back in one piece. Yeah. Okay, before I play these, I just have to kind of defend this game a little bit. Oh, I know the price was like, oh man, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, the price was kind of outrageous. For his, yeah, I guess, quote unquote, little content that you get. But, uh, people who bought this game and understood what they were doing kind of appreciate this game. I appreciate this game. I would have liked one complete package. Absolutely. It still would have worked the same if this was all just the beginning of the Phantom Pain. Straight up. This is the beginning of the Phantom Pain, but if it was just the Phantom Pain came out and this was what you started playing as, you know what I mean? It would have been nice. It would have been super sweet. It would have made a lot more people happy, I guess. But the reason they did that, to me, the reason they broke it up. Yeah, they wanted to make more money, but I think the reason uh, Kojima agreed to it, because it makes sense. It makes sense in the fact that the speculation and everything, like, who is Skullface? They built Skullface up to be this mysterious, fucking psychopathic, oh man, when he's torturing the guy, like, at the end you get that cassette tape and he's, like, torturing the guy and it's like, oh no, don't die, and he dies and he's just like, oh no, he died. And he's just like, whoa, who is this Skullface, man? He's crazy. Really interesting. If anything, this game did right. At least the first part. Ground Zeroes, I guess. Is it built Skullface up to be somebody that you couldn't wait to come in contact with in the Phantom Pain? So let's let's just uh, let's play all these. 
I heard about Paz's tapes. Yeah. Why do you think she'd leave him behind? And that diary? Whatever it was, her commitment was wavering. That much is clear. So she was leaving clues to help us? No way to know for sure. And the ocean's not giving her back. November 4th, 1974. At the outskirts of Barranquilla, Colombia. Contact with Big Boss successful. The doorknob posed as my professor, but Big Boss took one look and knew he was KGB. However, he does not seem to suspect me. To him, I am just a peace-loving student and another victim of the CIA. We asked him to drive the CIA out of Costa Rica. To him, this means betraying his country. His forces are smaller than anticipated. They drift from place to place with nowhere to call home. That provided us an opportunity, so we seized it. The doorknob offered them a plant off the Costa Rican coast to use as a base. As expected, Miller jumped at the chance. Although initially reluctant, Big Boss came around when the doorknob played in the tape. All because the voice on it sounded like his mentor, the boss. Damn. She's talking about Peace Walker. Naked Snake, the man who once saved the world from the brink of nuclear Naked. war. I awarded the title of Big Boss for his service. He later became a mercenary, abandoning both his title and his country. To him, that honor was steeped in the blood of the boss, the mentor he was forced to eliminate. Exceptionally charismatic, he possesses unparalleled combat and intelligence gathering abilities. His only discernible weakness is... her. This operation hinges on how effectively we can exploit that. Damn. Kazuhira Miller is Big Boss's lieutenant. Half Japanese, half American. He once served in Japan's self-defense force. Though he and Snake first met as enemies, they discovered a common bond and together built their private army with Miller directing business and administrative affairs. He comes off as shallow, but his true intent is hard to read. I must be careful. All that is clear is his infatuation with Big Boss. With East and West fighting over its control, Central America is now the most contested region on Earth. CIA Central American Station Chief Coldman has developed Peace Walker. A fully AI automated, fail deadly nuclear launch system with which he aims to reignite the Cold War. Snake's new objective in Costa Rica is to prevent that. The doorknobs, or should I say, the KGB's plan is to play the two sides against each other, turning the entire region red. Not one of the three parties realize they're all just pawns in Cypher's hands. Cypher watches all. Yeah. Crazy, dude. Mother base has developed rapidly since being established in the Caribbean Sea. They recruit more personnel daily, and already their mercenary services are turning a profit. Damn. Big Boss's leadership and charisma, and Miller's business acumen drive this impressive growth. Furthermore, joining forces with a faction of the FSLN has expanded their power even more. They have even commenced their own weapons development program. All is proceeding according to Cypher's will. I could not be more pleased. This fucking bitch. Snake's pursuit of Peace Walker led him to an AI modeled after the boss's thought patterns. It was incomplete, but somewhat ironically, making contact with Snake was the necessary finishing touch. Meanwhile, the scientist behind Peace Walker's locomotive control, Huey, defected to Snake's army. His presence has greatly accelerated weapons development at Mother Base. I failed to anticipate Coldman's madness, but nuclear war was yeah. averted. However, this was only after the boss AI on board Peace Walker sank itself to the bottom of the lake in what could be likened to suicide. The boss laid down her gun, choosing to sing for peace instead, and Snake, himself a gun, parted ways with her. In doing so, he reclaimed the title he once abandoned. He is Big Boss. The 
Dorlov has been detained. Since this leaves my cover identity without a guardian, the Mother Base staff has taken me in. I am now better placed than ever to monitor their internal affairs. Everything continues to unfold according to plan. The developer of the boss AI, Gross. Dr. Strangelove, has also come to Mother Base. With her and Huey's expertise, they can now Huey. develop a weapon capable of matching Fucker. Beast Walker. Fucking bitch. Development on the bipedal weapon is now complete. They call it Metal Gear Zeke. It stands there like some sort of mystical guardian. This soldiers gaze on it with pride and reverence. Big Boss has elected to arm it with a nuclear weapon. As an army without a nation, they seem to feel the need for a deterrent against whatever the world might pit against them. It is a dangerous gambit. Why do such a thing? Their nuclear strategy differs from the Americans and the Soviet Union. The superpowers deter attack by revealing their nuclear arsenals to one another. Snake and his men know that if they were to go public with this, the whole world would unite against them. Business would dry up overnight. So they do not plan on revealing the nuke until necessary. This ace in the whole approach is their idea of a nuclear strategy. Wielding a deterrent, all the while unable to reveal its existence. I wonder if Snake sees how vulnerable this makes them. Yes. Hijack Zeke? Yes, I did indicate that to be our leverage. But I cannot imagine his agreeing to that now. But did you not raise them to safeguard your governance without borders? No, no. I have not forgotten. Cypher watches all. Yes, things are proceeding, but modifying Zeke has not proven easy. I am using Zadarnov to buy some time. No, I have not forgotten what you said. However, well, forgive me for asking, but this is you I am speaking to, isn't it, Cypher? I must. I will fight Big Boss. She does. The world must be ruled by a single kicked. will. To defy Cypher is a fate worse than death. God, man. Okay. Whoa. Whew. Now, that was a lot of information going down, so... She's a fucking spy for Cypher. Pause. Oh, pause. Okay. We have more. We have more. As All of right. today, These are the last I will be ones. living here at Mother Base. Now my real trial begins. Zadornov was paying my room, board, and tuition. But he has since been captured. I told the man that with no more money from the KGB, I could no longer afford school. He bought my story. And when I said I would be willing to work, he took pity on me and let me stay. For some reason, Miller really pled my case. That was helpful. But the man is still a fool. His men are no better. They think their training makes them strong. But that kind of strength is nothing in the Listen face to this of music. true power. And better yet, they wait on me hand and foot, believing I am just a schoolgirl. Looks like I won't be working too hard after all. Just today, while scouting out the living quarters, I saw a group of them in the corner of the deck making a fuss. Going over for a look, I saw they were feeding a kitten. A bunch of grown hard men, and they are the ones acting like schoolgirls. Look, isn't he cute? What is wrong with them? Disgusted, I just nodded and smiled. I must stay in character after all. I indulged their chit chat for a few moments. Then one of them asked me to give the thing a name. They had just taken it from its mother. I named it Nuke. I improvised some nonsense about how our compassion for living things can help prevent wars. The men gave me a little fish. 
I held it out in my palm, and the kitten happily ate it up. What a pathetic, feeble creature. It sickens me. Yeah. She's a rotten person. Today, Chico invited me to go fishing with the soldiers. I suppose finding one's own food does have its merit, but I prefer not to be involved in such a degrading task. And their prattling on about fishing being fun is nonsense. I'm not here to find playmates. Nevertheless, distasteful as it was, I went along in order to maintain my cover. Chico thrust a fishing pole into my hand. 